So the uh, first thing you need to do when you're going to install the uh, VPA uh, adapter uh, ignition system is you need to take the timing chest cover off the engine. Now, I took mine off before we got here. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You just done both the screws. In my case, I put the screws back in a little uh, tidy little piece of plastic so I can put them because they're different lengths than I put them back where they came from. Um, if you have any confusion or doubt or are uncertain about uh, doing this process, um, a gentleman by the name, or going with the screen name of Mai Tai on YouTube, does a very nice job. I'll put a link to it. It takes the timing cover off and you can see things it takes loose. Um, in any case, so you need to do that to remove the Lucas uh, Magneto that was over here. And the next step is when you put the uh, uh, VPA uh, ignition unit back in. And we're going to show that next. If you remember um, the uh, Power Arc uh, kit. That's the Power Arc kit. comes with a uh, round-headed uh, hex screw and a stainless hex bolt. The reason you want this is because it allows you to uh, work at an angle and get around the... Uh, diameter of the actual uh, housing. So, I found that um, better to insert the screw first. When you're going to do this, I have a, uh, uh, I made a little thing myself. It allows me to get a little better. So, you've got the uh, screw in, and this is a little angle-headed, not quite as nice as, uh, as theirs, but still works. Anyway, and then you bring the, uh, the housing up to the uh, hole, begin fitting it on the two oh, studs, and uh, not all the way in, uh, about right there. Then start to screw, uh, stainless steel screw, and, and begin bringing it up to, uh, to where it sees. Uh, I'm leaving that up so I can snug it down later. Put the, uh, in my case I'm using lock washers because I don't have a uh, nylock type nut for this. And, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm working with gloves mainly because it's so damn cold. And, uh, So, okay, start the nuts, and the next step yeah, is, uh, the next step will be to tighten them down, and, come on, come on, there we go, there we are. Yeah. okay, so, there we are, here to a, uh, Begin the snugging up process. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to use a torque wrench. I've been doing this stuff long enough that uh, I don't. I can get away without it. <laughs> So, there, let me snug the other guy up. I think uh, this is usually like 19 foot pounds, and I can get that. So, uh, your work on this side of the engine for the, for the moment is done. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, when, when the bike was built, it came with three studs. Uh, one, two, and three. You had to remove that rear one uh, to get uh, to put the other screw in now. So you, what's recommended is the double nut uh, stud removal method, which is you take one nut, two nuts, tighten them firmly together with wrenches, and then you can use a, a wrench to extract the stud uh, 
from the uh, from the engine case. No big deal. Uh, the second thing um, is you'll notice that um, I had already removed the uh, nylon gear from the back side of the uh, uh, VPA housing and it's over on the other side where we're going to continue our work. Okay, um, we're almost done with the installation of the actual uh, VPA uh, ignition unit. I have here the white um, drive gear. It goes thusly. Yeah, roughly line it up with the, uh, the holes. It's not important because this part turns freely while this part stays still. Here's the uh, washer. Uh, yep. And that goes, well, let's, first of all, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's find those holes. Okay. Yeah. okay, there we are. Holes are lined up with the, with the uh, pinion. And uh, now, let me slide that in. Take one little Allen head screw. Through the hole. Where'd you go? Come on now. Gently. Oh, wait a minute. Alright. I think we put blue Loctite on these. So a little bit of Loctite on it. your time, but uh, that's probably good. There we go. So, when I finish this, I will uh, install the timing chest cover. I won't bore you with the process. It's so simple. <laughs> caveman could do it and uh, maybe that's the best maybe that's why I'm fooling with this anyway um, tighten these little guys down as needed uh, matter of inch pounds you know snug not tight but snug so, uh, I think it was like 76 inch pounds uh, in the manual it. Anyway, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> it's kind of like if you know the right way to do it. Okay. Oh, there we are. Well, that's not going to fall off. So, setting uh, top dead center on the front piston, front cylinder. Up here, well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'll buzz in there. Maybe you can. Here's a uh, piston stop. I think I showed it to you in the introduction. It holds the piston in place. The piston can't move left or right, up or down. Once that once it's hit top dead center and locked in. Let's get back and down. I'm not sure. <clears throat> anyway, you can only go one way. Um... Here is the uh, timing gauge. There's a wire that I happen to have located uh, up here on the, what is that, the oil jet. And uh, anyway, it's set at zero. You can see the DDC gauge is set at zero. Over here is the uh, PD, PDA kit, or the VPA kit. You can see the back, the drive gear there, in position where the old magneto was, and the old uh, uh, timing, advanced timing device, ATD. Uh, so we're set. Now the one thing you need to know, <laughs> if you've never done this before, and I think most of the people looking at this will have done, 
uh, timing dead centers. Uh, the, the key thing to verify that your position, your piston, is the top dead center is that both the intake and the exhaust valves will be loose. I don't mean loose like you can hear them, but loose like you can feel the, in this case, uh, you can feel the uh, push rods rotate. When you put your finger on them, you'll feel them just slightly turning as you move your thumb back and forth and back and forth. So you know your top dead center, you know your locked at top dead center, you know that your meter now shows you top dead center, everything's in place, you are good to time this motor or this ignition. So for the purpose of this section, I have taped off all the extraneous wires leading from and to the uh, VPA module. I've applied uh, 12 volts positive and negative to the red and black wires. Nothing else. I've um, set piston to top dead center. I now have um, I now have the uh, disc, and you may be able to see this, and maybe not. But right here is the tall slot that you want to watch for. That slot is the timing, the TDC slot. There's a red LED right over here. And when I move this, uh, rotate this disc, <clears throat> this timing disc, you'll see that illuminate right in this section right here. And, okay. Whoop. Okay, you can see it illuminated pretty well there, I think. Now I take my screwdriver, holding it still. Okay, I've lost it a little bit, and well, I haven't tightened it up too much. Ooh, I guess I have. Okay. Okay. Snug down nicely, red LED illuminated. We are golden, timing is set. The computer takes over from this point, you don't have to worry about it. So the last part of uh, installing a uh, VPA, Vincent Power Arc, ignition is to locate a uh, good spot for your coils and then hook them up to the wiring loom from the uh, VPA uh, module. <clears throat> I have chosen as you see the to use my cowl as a place to put the coil and uh, I did that using a couple of simple little brackets uh, little one inch L brackets inside. Well, I can see that. Anyway and uh, and I have attached the uh, <clears throat> um, spiral wound uh, high resistance uh, spark plug wires to that. Now uh, the final thing and this is kind of simulated <clears throat> you attach a uh, permanent 12 volt ground wire to it a permanent 12 volt um, power source and a, uh, a line leading to the to the uh, cable in which the um, the two uh, signal wires are grounded to one another and they ground on this, the trigger wires, I should say. Anyway, then when this is in position and you've uh, connected your, your assembly uh, to the VPA unit, you know, um, you're good to go. Now, I'm going to put um, waterproof connectors between the um, uh, cowl and the coil so I can separate the unit from the um, from the motorcycle and keep the without separating the coil. These wires are long enough. Um, just the final the final thing to mention I think is that you want to remember again resistor spark plugs. Do not attempt to ride this motorcycle uh, with a VPA ignition without a good resistor spark plug, and um, and also 
remember to uh, cut the spring uh, so that one quarter inch sticks out of the boot on this lower, um, well, they call it the lower, whether it's the lower or upper, depends on how it's oriented. The spring extends all the way out, goes all the way in, you're golden. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to show you starting it because this is out installing it and I want to get this on YouTube and uh, this is the end. I'd like to show you some uh, alternative coil mounts um, provided to me by um, uh, a fellow who goes by the screen name of Old Haven and I'm going to provide his uh, contact info uh, to you because he also sells these uh, uh, PPA kits. So, first one, uh, you see the, the um, uh, two coils, uh, that he was using two coils on that, on that conversion. And he has them mounted under the cowl uh, with, of course, the uh, VPA module and the conversion thing. The second photograph shows the bracket that he used. Uh, he mounted it uh, on the uh, front left side uh, cylinder. Um, and looks a fairly neat and clean uh, uh, layout. And then the final photograph is uh, as, it, as it looks with the uh, fuel tank on and, and ready to go. So, you have some choices now.